Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here, and today I've got some really exciting news for you. And while I'm telling you about that, I'll um, start painting this beautiful twilight scene. Um, it's an autumnal scene, and there are some really pretty colours in the sky. And it's inspired by this photograph that I found on Pixabay. I shall put um, the link to the reference photograph on Pixabay in the description below. Um, first thing I'm going to do is um, sketch out just the simplest form of this lakeside scene. Uh, and while I do that, then I'm going to share my exciting news with you. Just recently, I was approached uh, by a publisher who'd seen my work on Instagram. Um, and he said he really liked my work and would like to commission me to write a book on um, watercolour landscape painting. So I had a good old think. I was really surprised, quite shocked to be approached like this. But in actual fact, um, this sort of thing, you don't get offered this opportunity very often out of the blue like this. So after some sort of hard thought, I've decided to go for it. So content here might be a little bit patchy sometimes as... The book has to be finished by the autumn and that's ready for a spring publication. And of course, I'll keep you all posted here about that just in case anybody's interested in it when it comes out. Um, I'm really excited about this, but I'm equally terrified, as you can imagine. I've never written a book before, um, but it's going to be a challenge. But it's going to be one that I want to rise to and I think I'm going to really enjoy it in the end, um, once I actually get to grips with the idea of how to sort of set about it. And I just really wanted to thank you all here, everyone here, whether you've watched me from um, the beginning when I first started the YouTube channel, or whether you've subscribed recently or just dropped in. I just wanted to thank you for your support, your wonderful comments over the years, and um, just really for the fact of having this wonderful um, opportunity to be able to share my work with you here on YouTube has kind of sort of kept me accountable in a way. It's kept me painting, even at times when maybe I haven't really felt like it. And it's through running the YouTube channel and, of course, uh, my wonderful Patreon group. And thank you so much to my patrons for your support. I could not be doing this without you. Um, that I've been able to, for the past two years, um, work full time as an artist. And I'm in my sort of um, early 60s now, and I never dreamed that I would start working as an artist in my 60s. I mean, I must admit, I really wanted to be an artist when I was at school and when I was in my teens, but sort of life and myself um, conspired against that idea. Uh, but finally, in my 60s, I'm now actually doing it and I can't believe how lucky I am, how privileged I am to be able to do this. And so <laughs> watch this space. Um, the book isn't sort of anything big or fancy. It's just going to be a simple sort of straightforward look at loose watercolour painting for beginners. Um, so hopefully it'll be something that people will find useful. Um, I shall certainly enjoy sort of working in a very different way to the way that I teach here because, of course, um, here on YouTube, things are very sort of visual um, when I video and all I need to do really is just um, chat away and give a little bit of, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of information as I paint, um, colours, brush strokes, thoughts behind the process, that sort of thing. Um, the actual idea of turning that into written instructions isn't quite as easy as it sounds. I know because I've wrestled with it over the past week or so and I think I might have just about found a way to sort of begin. And as with any exciting new project or anything that's a bit daunting, the most important thing is to begin. You can't kind of start refining things unless you start. It's the same with painting. You can't improve with your painting unless you actually start and do it badly. So at the moment, I'm writing badly, but hopefully by the end of it, I'll be writing a bit better. So that's enough about that. Um, a bit about the painting. I started off with um, 
a graduated wash of cobalt blue and light red and I painted it wet in wet so I wet my page first and my paper is um, Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper 140 pound weight or 300 GSM it's 11 inches by about 15 inches or 28 centimeters by 38 centimeters and it's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees. And I'm afraid the colours aren't very good here. Um, the light in my studio isn't great, but I shall show some better colours um, in the shot at the end of the demo. So while the sky area and everything is still damp, I'm dropping in some colours for the foliage and the trees. The colours I'm using are raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber and a little bit of indigo. I'm just trying to get in the tone and the shadows to start with in this first wash. Getting it in really loosely. So I started off using my extra large Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush and I'm using the medium Harky brush. I will also be using my three quarter inch flat brush and um, and is Skoda Perla size 14 synthetic round brush. And I'll probably use a rigger as well and a palette knife to etch through some tree trunks, um, just through the damp paint. And that'll just give me a little bit of extra texture. I'm just trying to put in a distant tree, a uh, distant sort of um, shore maybe some sort of mountains in the distance, the other side of the lake. I can straighten that out a little bit later, but I'm just trying to get as much done as I can, wet in wet. So now you can see with the palette knife, I'm scraping through the paint and revealing some of the white paper underneath. This will give me some light reflecting on my trunks. It'll also give me some tree trunks and tree branches to work around once it's dry. And I come in and get my sort of uh, more of my mid-tones and my darks painted into the painting. If you aren't keen on scraping through the paint with a palette knife, um, or something similar, you can always leave this stage out and then when the washes are dry, you can paint your trunks in with a brush and paint. And I shall use the palette knife to scratch out a few little something and nothing details in the foreground, sticks and twigs, little plants, maybe little rocks. Uh, just suggestions of detail. I don't really want the eye to sort of dwell on the foreground. I want it to move into the trees and then across to the jetty that I'm going to paint, be painting in later. So now I'm going to leave it to dry completely. So I've had a cup of coffee and come back and it's nice and dry and it is um, a lot richer in real life than it shows here. Um, and I'm pleased with the way it's dried. Now I want to just darken up my horizon line and um, put in a little darker spit of land um, just coming out just below the horizon line where I'm going to then sort of put in um, a sort of a baseline for my jetty a bit later. I'm going to do this with a mixture of um, indigo, burnt umber and a bit of burnt sienna makes a nice dark, mixing it with quite a bit of water so it's not too dark. And then coming down a few millimetres or about a, about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch um, from the horizon and using the tips of the flat brush to put in sort of a little spit of land and then the beginnings of a distant jetty jutting out into the lake and that's going to really be my my focal point the trees will grab the eye I hope and then lead the eye to the jetty and then just around the painting it's a very simple painting this so I hope you'll enjoy having a go at something similar I'm now using my um, size 14 round brush and the same dark mixture with a little bit more paint in it, a little bit less water, and beginning to work around um, the tree trunks in this little clump of trees here in the mid-ground, um, leaving some of the 
paint from the first layer showing through for lighter trunks and branches. So this is negative painting really. I'm revealing the trunks by painting around them with my dark. And then just um, back with the palette knife, just to scrape through a little, you know, a little bit of um, variety in and around there. And that looks like some twigs and sticks coming in front of those tree trunks as well. And I just want to introduce a bit of the dark coming down further into the foreground. So I'm going to paint around the marks in the foreground that I scratched through the damp paint with the palette knife, um, just to produce some shadow and tone in and around them to give that a bit of depth and detail. This is where I need to be careful to keep the marks looking fairly random so it doesn't look too regimented. I want it to look like a sort of a very natural scene and not too sort of cultivated or, or as I say, regimented. So I'm still using my dark mixture, exactly the same mixture. I'm just working around the colour that's already there from the first wash and still using my size 14 round brush. Um, it's got a good point and it enables me to get the sort of look of maybe little reeds and grasses um, at the edge of the lake. And then um, as well as the little marks for the sticks, twigs, reeds, things like that, sort of vertical and diagonal marks, I'm going to just pull across a few horizontal marks with the brush, not too many, but just enough to keep that little bit of land nice and flat. And continuing with the same brush and the same dark mixture, that is indigo, burnt sienna and burnt umber, and the tip of this lovely brush I'm going to carefully work around my marks that I scraped in earlier through the rich paint to introduce some elegant fine trunks and branches. And of course, I'm still being guided by my pencil drawing that I put in to start with, where I mapped out um, the rough shape and position of my trees. I can still see that, but I'm also being guided, of course, by the etched marks um, which I put in when the wash was wet. I need to be careful not to overdo this. I can smudge any lines that look a bit dark. If anything goes on too dark as well, I can quickly take it off by dabbing with a tissue. Uh, but I'm working sort of quickly. I'm trying to work loosely and not caring too much where each line goes so that everything has a sort of very fresh hit and miss appearance. I don't mind if the lines aren't complete, if you can only see parts of them here and there. Uh, that adds to the loose effect of the trees. So I'm working around the canopy and around all of the trees. And I'm going to leave them for a little while, come back to them later, but I'm now going to put in the little uh, verticals of the jetty across the horizontal line that I put in earlier. Again, using the tip of the brush, using exactly the same dark. Just making sure that it's just a suggestion of the jetty. I'm not getting bogged down with too much detail. Just these simple marks in this context of being at, on a lakeside um, hopefully suggest to the viewer that that is just a little jetty. And now I've added a little bit of burnt sienna to my dark just to warm it up and lighten it up slightly. And using a rigger, I want to put in some distant trees above the jetty, keeping them really small so that they um, really set the jetty into context. You see the little strip of lake between the jetty and the distant shore. This helps to add depth and distance as well. I 
I don't want these to be too overt. This is just a little detail, again, that just helps the eye to understand um, the, the scale of the scene. This is a size one rigger, so quite a fine one or liner brush. And while I've got it, I think I might as well dip back into my dark and um, just get some, some more really fine twigs towards the end of these branches. And then I can also put some fine twigs across the mass of trees there on the left, just to break the mass up a little bit more, make it a little bit more interesting, but keeping these as suggestions rather than overtly painted strong dark branches. Again, trying to sort of hit and miss, which means leaving some little dotted lines, um, some incomplete. This in loose painting helps to really keep things fresh and lively and not too static on the page. And then lastly, with some burnt sienna on the flat brush, just dotting around a few lovely sort of uh, reds, um, nice brighter pops of colour, not too much, but just enough to warm up the foreground and the midground. And then back to the rigger, um, just adding a few more of these little twigs and sticks, maybe some dry brush across um, the mass of trees. I think I'm almost finished, so I'm going to, or it could be finished, but I need to check. So removing the tape will help me to see the painting with fresh eyes. Um, the white border kind of imitates a frame, and so you get to see it, and it almost, it helps you to see whether it's all in balance, whether it's okay, whether it needs anything else. So here it is against um, a plain background. It's a lot brighter than this, but the light in my studio is not great today. And I've decided it just needs a little bit of white gel pen, um, which is acrylic ink, which I'm just going to pull across a couple of branches across that darker area, and that just gives them a highlight. You can, of course, do this with white gouache, but for me it's a lot quicker just to use the pen um, and just put these little paler branches in, and I think that's a nice finishing touch. So here's the finished painting. I'm looking a little bit uh, more as it does in real life here. I've managed to um, get the prettiness in the sky to show up. Um, the cobalt blue and the light red have worked really well here. Um, if you wanted to, you could put a bit more detail into your lake. Um, you could put some dry brush across it or maybe a little bit of movement in the water. But I think I'm just going to leave it nice and plain and simple uh, because as you know, I'm a great believer in less is more. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you didn't mind me um, sharing with you my exciting news about the book. Um, I should keep you posted, but it, of course it won't be published until the spring. Uh, but when it is published, I will of course leave details here if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And if you click on the bell icon, you will be notified whenever we post another video. And lastly, but certainly not least, thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. We couldn't do this without you and we appreciate each and every one of you. So I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.